you want to research the BRICS, if there's anything that you should be concerned about globally, it would be what's happening with the BRICS. Hmm. So that is something I would encourage everybody to research. And the Saudis are talking about joining them. And ultimately what they'll do is they'll decouple our dollar from oil around the world, which is how we are currently, uh, the backing of our dollar right now is not on gold, it's really to oil. So it will cause a huge change in our economy as this rolls out. And it is it is the one thing that could impact the our way of life in America is what's happening with the BRICS. So you will want to research that. Because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're in escrow. And you now can manage through the home advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. The second thing that we're working on here is to make sure that the billions of dollars of wire fraud are no longer an issue in the industry. So that went from like a, you know, a million dollar problem in the late teens, right? In the, those years to a $2 billion a year problem in our industry. So this kind of verified transaction service where both parties get verified before the money is sent uh, and then not exchanging wire information over email. Like if, if you, hmm, I shouldn't say it, but I will. Like if you wanted to go through and get lots of bank information, go hack my email address right now. Hmm. And that's probably every single real estate broker that's out there. I'm going to say that. So that's what we're preventing. We're taking care of this consumer here in many regard. And I think that's really what's important to focus on as this new payment rail system rolls out. Got it. Now, as, as so as it relates to funding and whatnot, and obviously it's going to remove uh, the necessity for funding, right? I mean, at, at closing, it's just going to be, it's going to make that more streamlined, correct? Well, there's still funding. It's just the funds get there differently, mm -hmm. meaning that now if I send a wire, it might not get there for however many hours up till tomorrow, depending on bank to bank or, you know, or bank to title company, where this is true instant settlement. Like a lot of people use Zelle or use PayPal and they think that it's instant settlement, but it's actually not because those companies still have to go through a process of whatever lag time there is for that money to actually be sent from their bank account to the account of that other person. FedNow is instant, meaning it arrives the instant you send it. And it is like Teresa mentioned, verified on both sides, both parties. <clears throat> and it is not reversible either. That's the other big thing. So uh, that also helps to, you know, you're being careful who you're sending to because you want to make sure you're sending to the right people. Mm -hmm. But your bank's going to be integrated with the Fed. Ultimately, the title companies or whoever the servicers are will also be integrated with the Fed. And so it will go from your bank to the title company in instantly. And there'll be no chance for fraud like Teresa's talking about. Yeah. Well, that's that's huge. I mean, it's, it's huge for mortgage companies more than probably anyone, I think. Um, what is what where would you say the impacts lie on the real estate side of things? How does this impact a, a real estate agent? So in a day-to-day, -day, okay, so more security for the client, right? better consumer experience. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. For me as a broker or a loan officer, every single time I tell my client, because they're like, what happens next? I'm like, oh, it's the wire. It's time to send in the wire, right? I literally say, call to confirm every single time. And I have to stress the importance of that. 
And it creates this terrible moment in the transaction where they're already nervous about buying this house. And they're like, what do you mean? Like I could lose all my life savings by messing up this wire. So I think just how we practice real estate and the advice that we give our clients, that's a really big thing. If you're a broker with title settlements and you're sending out wires, right? If you're in that position where this is a profit center, where those serve those ancillary services are a profit center of your business, this is going to reduce the cost of sending all those disbursements out at closing. So I think those are the two biggest ways that the practitioner is going to be impacted by this. And then also just be able to say with certainty that this wire or this money transfer is coming in Friday morning, we're going to close Friday at noon. So just practically what we are expected to do and how we perform. I think those are just little incremental changes. Got it. Got it. So as it relates to that, this side of things, which is that the the payment rails, is there anything else that a real estate agent or, or loan officer needs to be aware of uh, as to how it might affect them? I mean, Sheila, you mentioned it. They're trying to keep this as almost under the radar intentionally, like you're not even going to know what's happening. Is that is that really wise though? Because when when this does roll out, are people just going to be like? Where'd this come from? What's you know? Because I mean, you you know that you guys live in this world that is is you know it's like the Jetsons. It's it's Star Trek <laughs> compared to the average consumer. I mean, it just is sure. to the to the average real estate agent who has access to be listening to this stuff. They're not paying attention, and so I mean, is is that going to have a negative impact, or do you think it's just going to be so seamless that, uh, you know, literally it's going to just be a slight change in how we do things and maybe for the better. Well, that's why they're only bringing 50 banks live this week. They're going to bring 50 live. They're doing bank to bank transfers right now as tests. Then Teresa and I are coming in with consortia to do testing in the actual real estate space with some people that we're going to be testing with on earnest money and making sure that that goes smooth. And then ultimately with the actual settlement of the transaction with the funds for clear to close at the end. So it, they're doing it the right way. They're doing baby steps and they're really being careful so that they don't just hit a switch and everybody's live and no one knows what they're doing. And we have worked with them. They're on stage at two major real estate events already. We're working on the third. To the Fed is or consortium? Yeah, Teresa. Teresa's on the yep. stage with the Fed. Um so she, she's going to be at IOI and Blueprint on stage with the Fed, as well as we're working on NAR annual. And we're also working with the Fed and their media team and our media team to be able to start doing recordings and doing educational uh, trainings on through YouTube and social media and things like that. Um, we would have asked them to come on here with us today, but it was just too quick. Um, so we're talking about doing this kind of stuff where... The guy, we work with the guy in, that runs the Fed in Chicago a lot. Um, and the Fed in Boston are the two main guys that we work with, but we're working with all of the Fed offices that are involved with this. So we want to just do recordings because it's really dispelling the myths. And many of the things that you brought up over the last year, Jeff, that terrifies everybody, we want to dispel the myths. We want to, you know, calm the fears. We want to educate and inform and then help everyone prepare to be able to utilize the new system as it rolls out from bank to bank. And it will go through the bank. So your bank will change the way they do business. You may not know that the bank has changed. You may not know it's running on the Fed rail, or they may ultimately have a button on their bank platform that you click for this. They have not said how it's gonna lay out bank to bank, I'm sure. They're giving the banks options, but yeah. we'll see after this week when they go live, <laughs> we'll see <Sure>. more. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the, uh, what is the latest on the fed coin, the fed currency? <laughs> we, we were just on a meeting with all the heads of all the title companies just before we got on here. That's the exact same thing they asked us. <laughs> I, I feel, I feel, uh, you know, so like maybe I'm, uh, I'm at the same, uh, you know, intellectual level then as these other people that you were on with. 
I think you're always five steps ahead, Miss. No, I, I was gonna say that, but I'm like, should I actually say that? Um, I'll say this. Um, just being in Europe in all the banks, there are signs that say uh the new CBDC is coming and we're testing it right now. Like it's it's there for people to see, and everyone in Europe knows it. So let's just say that the United States has to be competitive on a global economic forum, should we say, that that's where the rest of the world is. So there is no timeline for the release of that. Everything has been very quiet as far as when that gets announced. But if you're going to start tracking what, you know, the great British pound is doing, which is one of the strongest currencies in the world, then, you know, I would say that you know, when the horses leave the gate, there's a bunny that they're all tracking, right? So that's kind of where we are. And is that, is, are you saying that Britain's out ahead? Or, I mean, because I've, we've, you know, there's always been the talk about Russia and China also being out ahead in this race. Well, China's already out. China's been out for a year or longer. Uh, Russia's been looking at its. The BRICS, uh, they have theirs that they're working on. To put it in perspective, The BRICS are the five largest economies in the world. When you add them together, their use of the US dollar is exactly half of ours. The United States uses half of the US dollars in circulation. The BRICS represent the usage of the other half. I've never heard that before. Who are the BRICS? The BRICS, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and... Is it South South Africa? Yeah. So when you put those, those are the largest economies that rival to collectively, and they have their own organization. They rival the United States economically. Where did how the hell does South Africa get thrown in there? Not to take take this off rails. You want to research that, Jeff. You want to research the BRICS. If there's anything that you should be concerned about globally, it would be what's happening with the BRICS. So that is something I would encourage everybody to research. And the Saudis are talking about joining them. And ultimately what they'll do is they'll decouple our dollar from oil around the world, which is how we are currently, uh, the backing of our dollar right now is not on gold, it's really to oil. So it will cause a huge change in our economy as this rolls out. And it is... It is the one thing that could impact the our way of life in America is what's happening with the BRICS. So you will want to research that. But there is no official news on the CBDC. The only news that has come out is that many of the banks, see the central banks globally have all agreed to work together against what's happening with the BRICS. So we expect it to come. We don't know what it will be called. And we don't know if the U.S. will have a separate one and then there'll be a global one that is called CBDC. None of that has been actually named specifically yet. Interesting. Interesting. Um, and and what, what kind of negative impact could this have on, on us, uh, to put that in layman's terms? Well, if the demand for our currency gets cut in half, the purchasing power for the United States is gone. Yep. Meaning whatever it costs to buy the parts that go in your iPhone, now double that. Yep. All the semiconductors for everything that goes into your trucks and your cars and your EVs, everything that comes in on those shipping containers throughout the world will cost double. So if inflation didn't hurt you already, imagine the cost of living going up exactly by double. That's what that means in in really simple terms. So when we talk about America needing its currency to stick the landing, it's go time Mm. to do that. We need to harness our inner Mary Lou Retton. Is that what you're saying? That is my reference. And God bless you for knowing her name. (laughs) Uh, Great minds think alike. That's that's all I can say, Trace. I don't know what to tell you there. (laughs) Awesome. Well, so, all right, let's jump ahead. So you mentioned that there was a, and I love, I do, by the way, I love these little rabbit holes because it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. I think even if 
there is nothing to walk away from these conversations that's specific to real estate. It's it's very it's knowledge. And uh, it's fascinating because some of the conversations we've had, like the Argentina conversations, like I learned so much about that just talking to you gals. Uh, now, obviously, I'm going to go down this rabbit hole of bricks. And uh, when I come to bed at 2 a.m. and my wife asks why, I'm going to say, because I was reading up on the bricks. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, Teresa and Sheila made me do it. I uh, that, that'll that. go over really well. That'll That's go over real well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the truth is this all does impact real estate. Real estate's the number one asset class in the world. So how does this not impact real estate? Who can buy, who can sell, the cost of things, the ability to have what you want or have the lifestyle you want is absolutely all impacted by everything we're saying, without a doubt. Yeah. Well, and, and going back to what we were talking about with the whole Argentina thing, which was the whole, you know, the, the conspiracy conspiracy or not uh, of you know the country the government wanting to basically control real estate take mm -hmm. it away from consumers right okay so you guys and I, I don't want to go back down that one I, Teresa you had mentioned about the property token that pushes out this week uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that yeah so we're super excited the token we've hardened it we did a soft launch a couple of months ago and then pulled it back um just to improve the code, the return times. Anyway, nerd talk, it just, it's sexier now, it's better. Um, and as soon as you mint your token, um, which is just the cost of minting the token, we do a lookup, a property tax lookup for the consumer, and that's included. So we know that there's been some adjustment in certain parts of the country. So now is a good time to go to your, your county assessor's office if you qualify and say, hey, I think that I qualify for lower property tax. So we're super excited to launch that. Also, there's this whole treasure trove of goodies once you purchase your property tokens that unlocks in this storefront in the back end of the system. So we're really excited to launch that this week. So. Where, where are we at in the process of you know uh, getting real estate agents to uh, put their homes or make their homes NFTs? How, how is that going? Um, so the digital representation. So what we did do in this regard, we're not selling homes as NFTs because we still are pretty, um, we need more clarification on what is a security. We, of course, are super conservative and we say, you know, it's very sensitive to do it, to sell homes as NFTs and you're still paying for all of the other costs that are part of the transaction. So what benefit and protection does this have for the consumer? So selling homes as NFTs, still want to put that under a glass and kind of put it over on a shelf. Uh, as far as the, the practitioner, what we've done is we've made it so the practitioner can mint their identity onto blockchain so that they get a non-fungible token that says, Sheila is practicing real estate. Sheila is a broker in Texas. And then the consumer, when they go in to mint their property token, they can pull in Sheila and say, Sheila is my broker on this transaction. So it's all consumer driven, this whole system. That's really a culture tenant of like web three and web, web 5.0 to put the power into the hands of the consumer. Awesome. So the, the moral of the story is it's, I mean, what is, what is the answer to the question that I had, which is, you know, at one time it was re recruiting agents to be converting their past transactions, properties, is has there been any progress on that or is that kind of kind of a standstill? We think that given the costs, right? $20 per token, I think in times like this, that's just not a good narrative to be saying to agents. We're very sensitive to the volume of transactions that are happening right now for agents. So a huge cash outlay, we really had to dial that story back and reel it in and say, well, the best that we can do and the money that we've invested as consortia, actually, we took this upon ourselves to make this more palatable for the agents. Because we said, and, and we, we beta tested this, right? How much could agents afford to pay to mint their past transactions? So we realized that now is not a good time to push that. But what we can do is make it so the agent can mint their own identity and the consumer can select them. That way, the consumer is paying that $20 to mint the token, and then they get all the benefits thereunto pertaining, but it doesn't break the 
the bank for the agent. So it was a it was a best solution that we could offer after adjusting giving market conditions. Mm-hmm. Well, so thanks. Also, have, they, go ahead. But we also have uh, national title companies, national mortgage companies approaching us to put us as a tech fee so that the file is minted on behalf of the purchaser from them. That's the other way that it's coming about as well. So we're being approached by people saying, I want all of my clients that are closing with us to go through you and to mint all this data as an NFT. So we've had that as well. So we're, we've are we been working on putting a pilot with those companies together for them to test it and then be able to scale it for them. Hmm. So in other words, it becomes kind of an automatic thing as- or a tech fee on their closing disclosure is how and they- that's that's just transactionally then though. So homes that had to change hands now will get minted as a result of this. With the the people that we're doing that pilot with, they're going to do that on the front end, and then on the back end, they want to index everything that they have ever done. They want to do it both ways. When does this start? Um, they just flew to Arizona. We're supposed to meet with them again this week, I think, to talk about next steps. Tomorrow morning. So just lots of prep, lots of prep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. What else is new? What else should we be sharing and we should be, we be talking about today? I think it's pretty cool if I can just have a, a humble, happy moment. Absolutely. But, um, companies that companies are seeking us out to put their data on the blockchain. And that's kind of cool, whether it's like his majesty's land records in the UK or companies here in the United States that do really huge amounts of appraisal floor plan data. Um, it's just, it's super humbling to, um, to kind of be, you know, chased a little bit um, or for people to reach out and say, Hey, we've been trying to get on your calendar. Uh, yeah. can we do this thing now? Are you ready for this? Um, it, it's been a lot of sacrifice launching this company. Um, so it's cool to see, you know, it doesn't matter if you start a company and you have an idea, unless anybody else is behind you saying, Hey, I want to, I want that. Right. So it's just very cool. The days are still long. They go by quickly and they're long at the same time. But, um, that I think means the world to have like really smart people in the industry kind of being like, yeah, we want to do this and be with you on this journey. So did you stay at the uh, Buckingham Palace when you went to uh, London? No, I did not. No, Um, I stayed at a nice hotel. It's true, but not the Buckingham Palace. (laughs) That's cool. I mean, that's that's a cool story in and of itself. His Majesty, uh, which is also doesn't roll off the tongue for me yet. Um, <laughs> I know I keep saying so this person, like who we met with terrible story, but I'm going to do it. So he worked on, they call it H, uh, H M right. Uh, his majesty, her majesty, the initials for this in the UK, as I've learned, I'm learning a lot about other people's cultures in this company of consortium, our journey. So when this person worked on the records, H M stood for her majesty, right. And now it's his majesty. So I, I was, it was June. It was, uh, you know, it was pride month. So I was saying, is it they, them? What do we say? (laughs) (laughs) They, them records. I don't know. Yeah. That'll never happen. I don't think in the Royal family, I don't think that's ever going to happen. You you see, you see what happened, uh, to, to anyone who does things outside the box. They now live in California. Yeah. Thank you. That feels good. Thank you so much. (laughs) By the way, are you, are you at your house in California? I am. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm proud of you. Uh, microphone, sign, like you've come a long way. <laughs> I actually slept in my bed for two nights in a row, so it's a big deal. Also, congratulations. Good Thank for you. you. <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't have any other questions at the moment. I mean, I think this is also this is just this is great. I mean, I think um, you know, continuing to we probably should maybe just do this bi monthly because I think it's. Um, it's it's important just to continue to have the conversation, even though some of it might be repetitive. I think just continuing to have these conversations and keeping it at the forefront of people's minds to say, I gotta, 
I got to go check that out. Or, you know what? You, you walk away with a nugget to go learn about something. And, you know, again, and we talked about the Argentina thing, which was eye opening. I had no idea, but it's interesting because it does affect real estate and it is a, I don't know, a threat, if you will. And and now we're talking about the the BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. For anybody uh, that watches this and wants to go learn about it, just go type it into Google and and go do some reading because I'm going to and learn about this stuff that is a potential threat to, to our economy and our our uh, the, the way we've already always done things, our dollar, right? Um, so is is there anything that our audience should be doing with consortia? Uh, obviously, you know, taking the training. Is there anything new, anything updated there? I would say come check out the new product. That would make us probably really help, uh, happy. Um, come test it, come break it, come send us uh, emails, messages, how to make it better. We really want to learn from you to see how to make it better. Let us know what other products you'd like in the treasure trove on the back end. How can we help you sell more homes faster? What is the website they can go to to go check that out? R E Consortia, C O N S O R T I A, R E Consortia.com. Awesome. Go to R E Consortia.com. Is there anything specifically that they should be doing while they're there besides consuming? <laughs> uh, learning, sign up for training. We definitely want to educate. Awesome. And we still, do we still have our, uh, our deals that we, we have with LCA? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we should, they should be available through, um, through your system, your link. Yep. Yep. Jake, if you have that handy, can you throw that into the chat? I'm pulling it up as we speak. It's still there. So I'm going to throw it in there as well. Uh, Jake, if you can throw it into the uh, into LCA, that would be fantastic. Just to remind people what they can get and what they can do. And um, ladies, any parting thoughts? And the AI was at, there was another set of coursework with AI added in there at the end. So that's additional that wasn't in there before, but they'll see it as they go through the coursework. It's at the bottom. Um, yeah, I forgot to ask you guys about that. What, how is AI impacting your world? Uh, we've built it into the system on the technology part. And then as far as courses, um, I made a course over a weekend and I surprised Sheila with it on a Monday morning. And she's like, don't ever do that again. That's cool, but you're in trouble. So yeah, we've, we've used AI um, to create that course. Um, and then we have some more goodies, I think coming up with AI. And we yeah. use it to read. You can use AI to read photos, read data like OCR. We're using it in different ways like that with different companies that we're working with. And you'll see more companies coming out because um, more and more companies that are already large in the industry are approaching us about bringing their data on board. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we do that, we'll make that available to everybody in the community to be able to use their services. And it's, it's just helping bring, like we've always said, Carfax for Homes. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we've always been working towards is how do we bring all the data sources into one place that gives everybody a true and accurate estimation of the condition and the true value of each asset that you're purchasing? And I think that's good. That transparency is good for all of us. Nobody wants to buy something that they don't really know what is true or accurate about it. So it's, it's no different. That's what we've always worked towards. It's just, we're seeing it come to fruition now in a much larger, much faster pace than we ever expected it to. We were both thinking it would take us years to get all of this launched. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy how fast this is happening. Um, and I think as you see the different major players in our industry, like the major mortgage companies approaching us and the major title companies approaching us, it's just, it's scaling faster. I think partly because of our work with the Fed. And um, I think that's helping truthfully because people are realizing why we've done it the way we've done it, that we're, and even on the last call that we were on, some people just kept asking questions. 
<laughs> that it's they clearly didn't understand um, what private permissions based blockchain is versus crypto. And it became very clear through that conversation that they didn't understand. We're doing what the Fed's doing. We're doing what the government wants. We're doing what is going to ultimately protect everybody in the industry and the consumers to ward against fraud, theft, identity theft, land theft, property mm -hmm. theft. I mean, there's so many things that we have to consider with what we're doing, which is why Teresa has been working on this so long. Yeah. And it's just, there's a lot to it. Spending her weekends. Yes. Believe me. I spend all weekend with her getting the texts and getting the, <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's definitely seven days a week, all hands on deck with what we're doing, but that's part of, and you know, when we talk to the Fed, we talk about, you know, this is this is about our country. This is about us wanting to be, how do we help our country move into the next phase of what other countries have already done and are ahead of us? And how do we make sure we don't fall behind as a country? And as an industry, we all know there's so many parts of our industry that are archaic. Yeah. and are behind and that we just want to help level up to the digital age with what we're doing. That's probably going to be our, our hopeful saving grace against the bricks too, right? Is, is, That's uh, exactly getting... what we're hoping for. That's why Teresa filed for the patent against China and Russia. So that's exactly why she did that. I mean, no small task there. You're just up against a couple small countries. No big deal. Yeah, it's easy. Just uh, another walk in the park kind of day, easy to, <laughs> um, to answer. You are also asking what's coming up next. And sometimes I forget because we have so many of these big things with the government. Like last week we were with the FHFA sitting in Washington, DC. Um, so what uh, practically we can go over in the next coming months of weeks of calls is fractionalization. Consortium is taking big steps to move that ball forward because people do look to us for answers about real estate fractionalization. Um, the other one is instant cash to close, which is using the Fed now payment rails, um, and then home warranty product that's a hundred dollars instead of the five hundred six hundred dollar product. And that all of this is enabled through blockchain technology that we are working on to bring to the consumer. So mm. uh, that's I think kind of the stuff that we can expect to see more of later coming up soon. Let's uh, make sure that we put that in our little text thread so we don't forget it when we uh, schedule our next one, because I think that home warranty is interesting. I want to know what the catch is to that cost. And uh, yeah, we can expand upon the, the cash to close, which we did talk about today. Uh, and then the fractionalization, which is a whole nother topic, which is, you know, multiple, basically, if, if I can, if this is correct, multiple owners, you can own a fraction of real estate, basically, which really doesn't exist. It does, but in different forms. And I think this is going to make it much more mainstream, right? Yeah. Cool. You remember the old timeshares? Yeah, oh, yeah. In the old days, people used to do timeshares. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then you get your weeks or whatever. Yeah. You don't, you don't get the weeks here. You just purchase ownership in it. Yeah. So you can purchase. And for those people who don't have a lot of money to invest, this is a great way for them to be able to have an investment vehicle without having to buy an entire apartment building. This is a great way to do that. Yeah, that's it's going to open up all kinds of uh, opportunities, I think, and I'm excited to talk more about it. So let's uh, make sure we do that on the next one. You're okay. awesome. Ladies, as always, it's a pleasure. Let's, uh, let's stay in touch and we will uh, hopefully talk soon. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for having us. Good to uh, see always. you. Take care. Uh, okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.